Switzerland will now begin our descent to Rio de Janeiro. Could you please put your seat back in a bright position? Good morning to the presenters in Rio. Good kind of crazy, but after being on the plane for 12 hours and what, there's a five-hour time change, right. I don't feel any jet lag at all. Neither do I, but I think maybe it's because there is so much energy on this beach. Yeah, there's eight million people in Rio, and this is the playground, this is, this is their home away from home. I think you're right. Though each of Rio's 16 beaches bask in the same sun, Copacabana and Ipanema remain the hottest. And no one owns a grain of Rio sand. Every beach is public. And that makes Rio's beach scene a great example of democracy. People from every imaginable background and skin color coexisting under the sun. But since 53% of the population is under 19, majority rules. That accounts for the huge beach crowds every day. And when the sun shines, these beaches redefine the word crowded. Chuck, oh, how do you say out of shape in Portuguese? Hate to break it to you, but it's not in their vocabulary. I think I can understand why. It looks like there's every sport imaginable on this beach. If LA is the fitness capital, then Rio is Mecca. With so much time spent unclothed, flab is like the plague here. And since fitness is an obsession, sports are essential. To get a workout, you go, where else? To the beach. A good football game on the beach can attract a lot of fans, but the real crowds can be found at the Maracana, Rio's major sports stadium. The biggest in the world. It seats over 200,000. That's twice the capacity of the Rose Bowl. Less strenuous, but more popular, volleyball scores is the most accessible beach activity for all ages. But the real attention grabber is a marriage between these two pastimes. Now you take the net and the court from volleyball and add one big rule from soccer, no hands, and you get football. Dan, you know what really impresses me about this beach? <laughs> well, I have an idea. No, no, it's not what you're thinking. No, I'm talking about the, the physical rock formations that jet up around the beach. Wait a minute, you, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, like Pound Giyasuka. I don't know that one. What's that? Pound Giyasuka. That means sugar loaf. It's located just at the end of Copacabana Beach. This rock that we're standing on is real important to the discovery of this area because in 1502, the Portuguese were attracted here because of this. and. Well, they thought they had discovered the mouth of a great river, and since it was the month of January, guess what? River January. Uh, That's what they called it. Rio de Janeiro. Yeah. But it's grown a lot since then. Yeah, it really has, and it's about, the population's 10 million people, and that makes it roughly the size of Los Angeles. But here, they're crammed along a 15-mile stretch that's only about a mile wide. That's what they call dense. But not as dense as the beaches. The beach. <laughs> burning down Smart. here. Put a lot of that suntan on because the sun down here in Rio is real hot. If I take this shirt off now, I'm going to burn. Looks like once you get a tan as good as that one, the only dress code on this beach is suntan oil. In Rio, there's a fine line between total tan and chic. And only 23 degrees south of the equator, you're always in direct line with the sun. Rio de Janeiro overlooks the Atlantic Ocean on the southeast coast of Brazil, 6,300 miles or 12 hours in the air from Los Angeles. That's almost as far as Europe or Japan and about the same cost, close to $900 round trip. Since the majority of Rio's tourists come from Europe, the city is most crowded in the summer, our winter. But it really doesn't matter because Rio remains between 60 and 95 degrees all year long. The beaches and the sea, that's where I long to be. Had it with the sun for a while, huh? Abrigado. You know, I have never seen sidewalks like this before. Cal said down. That's the name of the sidewalk. It's Portuguese. It takes out of the Portuguese flavor. And this it, sidewalk like this, this mosaic, goes from Copacabana Beach several miles all the way up to Ipanema. And you know these little patterns? You know what this is in here? No. This is the wave. It's supposed to be the ocean. 
Hotels within walking distance of the beach range from $15 to over $200 per night. But most Rio residents aren't so lucky. They must drive to the ocean. Spectacular mountains separate the different sections of the city which are connected by a system of tunnels. But all roads eventually lead to the beach. Chuck, how do you say I'm hungry in Portuguese? 26 different kinds of meat from six different animals. Such vegetarian delights are featured at churrascarias like this one all over Rio. I know. This style of barbecue originated with the gauchos in the cattle country of southern Brazil. And the best part? Like eating anywhere in Rio, churrascarias are a bargain. All this for about $5. What I want to know is how the women in Rio can eat all of this food and still look so good in those tiny bikinis. I don't think they come in here. For some people here on Ipanema Beach, the worship of a beautiful body is like a religious experience, I think. But that kind of worshiping is second only to Catholicism, because Rio has the largest concentration of Catholics of any city in the world. Yeah, and of course, when you talk about that, the big statue, what, at Christ the Redeemer up there on Corcovado, okay. stands as a constant reminder. This has got to be the best view in the whole city. You know, that's why they put the statue of Christ the Redeemer up here, because from here, he can look out over all of Rio, yeah. from the mountains, the harbor, the beaches, everything. Okay, well, here, got a statistic for here me. it says, yeah, that he weighs over 1,400 tons. I can believe that. He's 123 feet tall, and his arms reach over 91 feet. Yeah, it's good he's got long arms, because from what I've seen down there on the beach, he could use them, you know, to cover his eyes. <laughs> I think you're right. Definitely. <laughs> anything so small be so important? Well, your wardrobe. Like that's everything. a wardrobe? That's a wardrobe Don't here. Don't need much of a suitcase, do you? Not at all. Like everything else here in Rio, it revolves around the beach. Okay, well, coming up, we're going to take a look at Rio's fashion contribution to the world, the bikini. The sexiest city. It's as simple as two dots and a dash. In America, that means Morse code. In Rio, it's a way of life. Thirty percent of our lives, forty percent of our life is the beach, you know. So I mean, we really care about bikinis here because we want to look nice in the beach. So most of the women here. They have like four to five sets of bikini in their wardrobes. That you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. Because it's like you don't go out every night with the same dress. Do you? you go to the moon, you wear a spacesuit. You go to Rio, you wear a bikini, or at least an abbreviated version of the old swimsuit. In Brazil, swimwear is considered high fashion, day or night. One-piece bathing suits, are they all gone now? Is that out? A lot of young people use one-piece uh, swimming suits, but they are very uh, fashionable. They have uh, V-cuts and they are open in the front. They have special cuts that make them sexy and very attractive. Divide and conquer. The one piece has surrendered to three small pieces and some string. It's called the tanga. How can so little say so much? Well, this tiny statement is Brazil's biggest contribution to the world of fashion. Now, to my untrained eye, they all look the same, but not to the people of Rio. The roll-ups uh, are completely out now in Brazil, but they were fashion one year ago. Now we have adjustable bikinis uh, that like you have uh, like a pamper and you can adjust this pamper that you can tie it to the body and make the size you want. They change the colors in order to 
to make a combination with the color of the skin because after two or three months of summer the girls are really tan so they want something really electric, uh, really bright. The conga may be man's best friend, but bikinis are not for women only. What about the men's? That, that doesn't change very much, you know? They're wearing now very big shorts, you know, like the surf mm -hmm. boys, you know? They do that. Some, some men find it very comfortable. Would you say Rio is the trendsetter for bikinis? I think the fashion we do is the bikini, for sure. What we show to the world towards fashion is bikinis, yeah, definitely. Why is the bikini more accepted in Brazil than in the United States? Many European countries, uh, they accept uh, nudes, uh, top lasses and this kind of things. They are not uh, immoral or thing like that. No. They are just, let's say, small, uh, funny, colorful and it's fashion. Electric colors, strings, roll-ups, sequins, there's every variation. But can they get any smaller? They will never get bigger. Never. Because, yeah, because, I mean, here they like to show their bodies. Women, they do like to go to the beach. You know, just about anybody's willing to wear a bikini down here. They don't care what the size, shape, age, or anything else. I saw a pregnant woman in a bikini. First time I'd ever seen that. Well, the Brazilians view a lot of things differently, but not just swimsuits. I think they do their celebrities, too. After numerous film roles, Claudia Ohana remained an obscure Brazilian actress. But a part on one of Brazil's hottest soap operas helped this hometown girl become a Brazilian star. Claudia, in the United States, we hear about the girl from Ipanema. But you're the girl from Rio. Tell me about that. It's a little difficult to work here because the people don't like to work just to go in the beach and don't do nothing. But it's a beautiful town, beautiful city. For some Americans, there is an image of Brazil and Brazilian women as being very beautiful, very sensual. Is that correct? I think the people is very different. different. Mm -hmm. The man and the woman, I think it's very different. He is, it's more relaxed, you know what I mean? Because here's hot, all the people don't use a lot of clothes, you know? Last year, Claudia posed for a Playboy pictorial, published in both the U.S. and Brazilian editions. But reaction was hemispheres apart. In the United States, sometimes if an actress is in Playboy magazine, some people say that she's not a real actress and look down on her. Does that happen here? No, all the actress series to do that here, the singers, the actress, is very natural. Mm -hmm. It's very natural. The people, your serious actors, it's not a problem. Don't worry about that. And I didn't know it was this way in New York. I didn't really. I didn't know. Another Brazilian known only as Bernard may be the Captain Kirk of Rio. He's reached Brazilian stardom with his legendary serve known as the Journey to the Stars or simply the Star Trek Serve. How did you come to invent the Star Trek Serve? Beginning the beach. The people don't like that because uh, the ball go up and in the beach is difficult with the sun, the lights, you know, for the eye. And one time, in one game, in the final of South American Championship, I look my my coach and and say I'm gonna make now no like, oh. boom point you know and All make right. a point. Yeah. Whoa! But this ball is not so good. <laughs> How do you do it? Yeah, the way is I have to to make four parts for the ball. Yeah. And the second part to the left side to the right, I touch in the ball. With this way, my hand. Straight arm and much power. This side here? Yeah, this side. And the ball goes for this. Oh, I do? Just like yeah. this? Yeah. Oh, no, it didn't? But for the other yeah. side. <laughs> no. Good. Out of bounds. Oh, good. Beth. 
Get him. Because of the low ceiling at the Long Beach Convention Center, Bernard was unable to use his Star Trek serve during the Olympics, but he still managed to lead the Brazilian national team to a silver medal behind the U.S. He is a superstar at home, but his travel with the volleyball team has given him a perspective on Rio we can all appreciate. Rio, it's very like uh, California. Is uh, we have so many beaches and the people are very happy, and the people like so much parties and festivals. Then I, you know, I think here is a a place real party time always. When we return, the party to end all parties, carnival, and the beat that keeps this city sexy, samba. The sexiest city. And when the sun goes down, it gets even hotter. <laughs> Brazil's national pastime is a far cry from baseball. Year-round, the samba beat never stops, and the dancing reaches a frenzied climax during Carnival, a four-day celebration observed every year all over Brazil. The biggest and the most famous Carnival celebration happens in Rio, and its lifeblood is the samba. Carnival is made of samba. Four days that everybody here goes crazy about the samba. Carnival takes place the last four days before Ash Wednesday in February, early March. It signifies one final blowout before the penitence and fasting of Lent. Carnival. Carnival is the biggest part of the Brazilian people. It is a moment of love, of beauty and emotion. It is made with a lot of love because that is what is of most importance in Brazil, the happiness. For four days, this entire city shuts down for samba and celebration. These people have given new meaning to the word party. Carnival preparations begin a whole year in advance in the Samba schools, which are really local community clubs dedicated to staging extravagant parades during Carnival. With as many as 3,000 members, these Samba schools choose a theme, plan the floats, design the costumes, compose the new music and special lyrics, and no one gets paid for their efforts. It's all for love of Carnival. Most Samba schools are based in the poverty of Rio's slums, known as flavelas. And you have to wonder how someone making under $100 a week can afford a $1,500 carnival costume. They make shows during the year, you know, to, uh, to get some money for the school and to, to help them to make the costumes. has benefactors as well, but it's the tourists patronizing shows like this that helps fund most of the carnival preparation. The samba beats infectious here, and everybody catches it, but to do it right, your arms can do as they please, but your hips must lose their inhibitions. To support their carnival habit, these samba schools must travel and perform, but to practice, they come back home. Samba practice is not exactly a rigorously structured workout. It's more like vertical break dancing with 500 of your closest friends. The whole community gets involved, auditioning to perform in the parade, learning lyrics, and perfecting new musical themes. Tin cans, drums, mufflers, if you can beat it, it's part of the band. As many as 300 percussion instruments join together to pound out the distinctive musical beat with its strong roots in traditional African rhythms. And finally, the only thing that can get the people of Rio off the beach. hundred straight hours, these people are slaves to the sound of samba. It's everywhere. Rich and poor dance side by side. Everybody's equal during Carnival. By 6 p.m. on Carnival Sunday, the 12 top samba schools begin a relentless 18-hour procession past a panel of judges. By noon the following day, they've chosen a winner, a highly prestigious honor in Rio. 
And every year, the winners, the costumes, and themes change. Only the Samba remains as the beat that keeps Rio the sexiest city. It's time to get off the beach and out of Rio. Good night, everybody.